After four years, they had a craft they hoped was tough enough to survive the crushing inferno of Venus, Venera 7. Just before Christmas 1971, Perminov and his team saw the probe's faint signal reporting touchdown. They had made it. The first glimpses we got of what it really looks like on the surface were from those Russian Venera pictures of uh, small pieces of sort of um, strange volcanic landscapes on Venus. Those pictures were mostly of the ground, but just in the upper corner of the pictures you could see a little bit of the sky, this brightly glowing but featureless because it's cloudy sky. I always thought that was really neat, that you were there on the surface of Venus and you were just catching this little glimpse of what it looked like to actually look up and see the sky of Venus. But what had the probe detected as it fell through that sky? If you were plummeting down through the atmosphere of Venus, first of all, you'd have to make it through the clouds, which are quite extensive. They are not like clouds on Earth. They, first of all, they cover the entire planet, and that cloud deck is more than 10 miles thick, so it would take you a long time just to get down through the clouds. When you're actually in the clouds themselves, by the way, they're very diffuse. It's more like a fog. Well, what would it be like to stand on the surface of Venus? Now, the first thing that would happen would you be you would scream, and nothing else would happen <laughs> because you would be instantly consumed by the hot, high-pressure, noxious atmosphere. But assuming you had a good environmental suit and you walked out on the surface of Venus, I think the first thing you would notice would be the murky red light. On Venus, in the middle of the day, it's about as light as on a deeply overcast day on Earth. So you would never see the sun from the surface of Venus, but there's sunlight filtering through the clouds. 